So we were fortunate that the state of Rhode Island selected us to build the Block Island wind farm. So that's a five turbine project, small project without a clear project after uh, the Block Island project. So we worked here at Profport, and in working here at Profport, we used temporary facilities. But what we also did is build strong relationships, strong relationships with the Port of Providence, uh, with local companies such as GZA, uh, and with the local union workers who worked on the facility. And we were fortunate enough for Rhode Island to select us as Ersted to build its second project, its first utility scale project, the Revolution Project. We wanted to build on those strong relationships that we were able to form during Block Island to deliver this uh, state-of-the-art fabrication facility to bring major foundation fabrication here to Rhode Island. There's very limited ports in the U.S. Northeast for our ambition of the size of projects that we're looking to deliver. And all these ports, they weren't designed for the sort of the heavy loads and the size of the components that we're going to bring with this generation of offshore wind projects. So we need really smart people to look at the existing use of these facilities and how do we prepare these facilities for their new intended use. This facility was built in the 1930s and historically has handled uh, a lot of liquid and dry bulk products, uh, mainly focused on the fossil fuel industry. Uh, so it was really interesting when in 2015 we were able to be the host of the uh, marshalling port for the Block Island Wind Farm. The sky's the limit for Provport as well as all of the port facilities in Narragansett Bay. We really think both the offshore wind use plus the existing uses can all marry very well together and we can operate one port with multiple uses for a lot of years to come. So this building is approximately 30,000 square feet in total. It has 80 foot height with a 100 foot clearance and at the top of the building itself is overhead cranes. So we had, uh, we installed overhead cranes for each side of the building, four in total, 15-ton um, cranes, and they move throughout the buildings. So this uh, site had some environmental and geotechnical challenges to build this facility. Uh, the soils at this site consist of about 15 or 20 feet of loose, granular urban soils that are contaminated, and below that is about 7 to 10 feet of soft compressible organic silt. Uh, below both those surface layers is a deep layer of sand that goes all the way to bedrock. So some sort of deep foundation system was going to be required for this building. And we could have looked at the traditional deep high capacity pile type system, steel H piles or concrete piles, but those get to be very expensive and they have to be driven very deep all the way down to bedrock. So as an alternative, we looked at what is called an intermediate foundation system. It's sort of a cross between ground improvement and a pile type foundation and it's called rigid inclusions and rigid inclusions are cast in place concrete elements that are put into the ground with a mandrel as the mandrel is driven and then extracted the concrete takes its place and forms a grid of rigid inclusions across the site so those were the challenges as it relates to structure and foundation and in the geotechnical now being a regulated site also we we had to limit the amount of disturbance we had on the site. We only could disturb an acre. An acre is a little over 40,000 square feet, so we only had 10,000 square feet to work with around the outside of the building. So that was, that was another challenge to, to meet the Rhode Island regulations. The uh, adjacent parcel where the retaining wall is, is the former location of the Providence City Municipal Solid Waste Landfill. And after many years of being covered and capped, it's still giving off methane and other landfill gases. And those uh, had to be taken care of and, and the building had to be designed to vent those gases so they wouldn't get into the manufacturing facility. The design build uh, facet of, of the deliverable allows the construction manager and the design team to work together to start work earlier in the process while the design is being completed. And so it's a, it's a much quicker process and, and hopefully it's a much more uh, cost efficient process. So within one year we were able to design the building, erect the building and turn it over to the owner for their use. We view offshore wind with a very strong offshore wind resource near our population load centers as a key part of how 
we transition to a clean energy economy and create a lot of good family sustaining jobs in the process.